the second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 25. And uh, I kind of chose just to be up here tonight. We'll see how it goes. Um, I really want Tuesday evening to be more uh, of a I don't know, kind of informal. I want folks to be able to feel like they can talk and they can speak. Um, that we can delve into the Word of God together. Um, feel free to ask questions. Uh, I'll answer if I can. If not, I'll get you an answer. I apologize, it's a little cooler. I thought I could wait till after work to turn the heat on. I come here right after work, but it still hasn't got as warm as I anticipated, so I'll need to get that earlier in the day. So, uh, so some folks are saying, yeah, it feels great. Others are saying, uh. So, uh, uh, but let's, let's look at first, uh, Second Chronicles 25. And uh, the Bible is talking and giving us history of a man named Amaziah. And uh, really his story is given in this chapter. And You know, it's one chapter, but it's really a lot of years that is given to us as we look at this chapter. And I'm going to look at several, uh, a few verses, and then we're going to look at something specifically. And I, I just kind of want to look at some highlights of this chapter and things that I feel like are helpful to us and will help us in the new year. And so the Bible says, And Amaziah was 25 years old when he began to reign. That's pretty young, amen, but still at 25. The Bible says he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehoadan uh, of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Wow. Isn't that interesting? We can do what is right in the sight of God, but not with a perfect, or maybe we could use this word, but not with a complete heart. His heart was yet divided. He did what was right, but he didn't do it for the right reasons. And he didn't do it because he had a relationship with God. And uh, we find that um, the Bible says, Now it came to pass when the kingdom was established to him, that he slew his servants who had killed, uh, uh, had killed the king his father. And it's interesting, he did what was right. We read on down through verse number four. The Bible says he slew not their children, but did as was written in the law in the book of Moses. In Deuteronomy 24, 16. He did what, what was written there. Amen. Uh, the father shall not die for their children. Neither shall children die for their fathers. But every man shall die for his own sin. And so that was what was the commandment of Moses. Really it's reflective of today. Uh, it's our decision if we will serve God. We will not die because of the sin of our, our, of our parents. Nor will our children die because of our sins. But every man will be held accountable to God. So he did that which was right. He did what, what was right in the law. And the Bible says, And Amaziah gathered uh, 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 Judah together, and he made captains over thousands and captains over the hundreds, according to the house of their family throughout all of Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them from 23 years old and above, and found them 300,000 choice men. Able to go to uh, go forth to war, who can handle spear and shield? He hired a hundred thousand men of valor out of Israel for a hundred talents of silver. So we understand what's going on here. He is going to war, and uh, he is king of Judah. And so he gets himself. The Bible says. 300,000 choice men. He numbers them. And he gets 300,000. That's a lot of men, isn't there? Uh, and so, but, but it's still not enough. So he decides, I'm going to go and buy or I'm going to rent some men for, for, for a, a, hundred, a, a hundred talents of silver. The Bible says that he hires a uh, hundred thousand men of valor out of Israel. However, there's a problem. Even though he has a divided heart, he's still doing what's right before God as he rules over Judah. But in Israel, they are not serving and doing what is right before God. And so there's a big problem. He's aligning himself with some folks who's not honoring God. 
And so all of a sudden on the scene, we don't even know this man's name. He comes on the scene and he's a prophet. And the Bible says that the man of God said to him, O king, let not the army of Israel go with you, for the Lord is not with Israel to wilt with the children of Ephraim. It's, it's it, the, the commandment that he gives. Uh, he, he doesn't mince words. He tells them they're not serving God. You don't want to go with them. You don't want to align yourself with them. But if you go, uh, but, but if you go with Israel, uh, or he says, if you go by yourself, you you will do well. But if you go with Israel, do it. Be strong and battle. God, uh, God shall make you fall before the enemy. For God has uh, has power to help and to cast down. So the prophets say it may look like you have more numbers if you align yourself with Israel. However, numbers doesn't mean anything to God. God is in control. And if you align yourself with that big number from Israel, you're going to fail because God is not honoring. God is not pleased with this. You are going to fail. And so the Bible says, and Amaziah said to the man of God, listen to his, his quibble. Listen to his problem. Listen to his rebuttal. He says, but what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of the Lord? And the man of God uh, answered, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is what? Able to give you what? Not just more, but much more. Much more. But you're right. Able to give you more than this. I wonder this. I wonder this in 2019. Are we quibbling and squabbling and focusing on things that aren't important more than we're listening to the commandment of God? Are we really listening to the commandment of God or are we worried about things that really aren't important. And so this, at the basis, the beginning of this year, I, I want us to think about this. God is able to give us much more. God is able to give us much more. And so we have uh, this, this, this prophet who's coming and uh, uh, to Amazon, king uh, uh, of Judah, and he's saying, I don't want you to worry about the hundred talents of silver. Uh, it may seem like a waste to you, but do you understand what you are dealing with? You are dealing with what God wants you to do more than things that you are worried about losing. Do you know what? Uh, in our world that we live in, amen, there is so much that God has for us. Let's not focus on the things that are important. Let's not focus on uh, lacking in our obedience to God, lacking in our surrender to God, lacking in our faith and our confidence in God. Amen. But He's the God of so much more. If you play politics, uh, politics, the winner says, but the one with the most influence will win. And if you look at the material things, someone may say, well, I have more than you, so I win. If you look at potential things, some people may say, uh, 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 but, 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 but I, I will be more than you. And if you look at knowledge and education, some may say, I have more than you. And if you look at emotions, some folks may say, well, well, I can withstand more than you. But God's not looking at all that. He's not looking at what's stacked in our corner. God is looking at our obedience to Him. And if we will be obedient, He will give us much more. Much more. God always wanted separation. God didn't want Judah to align themselves and Amaziah to align themselves with unholy things. God has always called for separation. He did it with Abraham. He did it with the nation of Israel. He did it in the priesthood. He did it in the tribes. They were to be separated. And so we have to value what is our priorities and what is our commitment to God. And we have to separate it. I want us to think this year more than ever. What is the most important things in my life? What are the most important things? And what does God want? And what is my value of what God wants for me 
versus the things that seem important and seem like they may be a waste if I let go of, but God can give me much, much more. Think about that tonight. What are the things that we worry about losing? But God says, don't worry about it. I'm a God of much, much more. Let me just say this. Last year I was finishing off by talking about worship. And worship was, we were focusing on that being sanctification. And so uh, here we are back to that similar thought where, where, where God writes and Paul, he preaches to the Romans. He says, be not conformed to this world. He says to the Corinthians, come out and be separate. He said to the Galatians, Christ gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present world. He says to the Ephesians, be not partakers with them and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. To the Philippians, he says, be blameless and harmless as the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and a perverse nation. He said that they were to shine as lights in the world due to the Colossians. He said, put off the old man and set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. He says to the Thessalonians, abstain from the appearance of evil. He says to Timothy, no man that wore the title himself with the affairs of this world. Amen. But, but, but he wants to be a good soldier and to flee youthful lust. He says to Titus, deny ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. Uh, James says this, what, uh, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an, is an enmity with God. And John says, love not the world, neither things that are in the world. We live in a world that is mixed up. There are some folks that I love to, uh, to, 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 to listen to buy into things that, that they have on Facebook. And Brother Dennis's brother-in-law, Carl Wickard, he shared something that was phenomenal. If you're a friend of his, look it up or look it up uh, 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 on YouTube. But, but I, I was listening, and I don't agree with everything with John MacArthur. He's uh, very much Baptist and once saved, I always say, but he does have some good stuff that I like. And so he was asked a question about a transgender. We live with that in this world. And uh, so, so those are things that we're focusing on because we, 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 are, we, are, we, are, we are told that we must be tolerant and we are told uh, lots of lies by the world. However, the truth is this. The truth is the world will push an agenda, and I'm using this as an example tonight. The world will push an agenda that is far from God. Uh, the world would say, well, 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 if you want to be, if you want to be another gender, you can be another gender. And I believe it's in Australia, they took a five-year-old boy, the parents did, and had a sex change operation on that child. That is a shame, and they will answer to God. Do you know that those that are in that situation are 19 times more likely to commit suicide? But physics and science and chromosomes and God himself ordains what a person should be. And so the world is running around and, 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 and all your, your liberal uh, professors and teachers in this world are professing that we need to allow them to be what they want to be. I recently looked, uh, I saw an ad in the, an ad that was uh, uh, Celine Dion, you may know a, a very popular uh, pop singer, she is now coming out with a new line of clothing and promoting it, she goes into a maternity ward and she blows some type of dust and no longer is it pink and blue, but everything becomes gender neutral. The world is pushing that on every level. And the world is saying this is the norm. But God says it is not the norm. The word of God says be not conformed to this world or the things of this world. Now I'm taking an extreme situation and talking about tonight. But I'm talking about our lives. Everything about the world system is anti-God. They don't understand the love of God. Their heart's desire is not to please God. Amen. Don't get involved in this world and think that you're losing something by honoring God. Honor God in every level of your life, particularly as 
we're partaking in a new year, let's honor God in every area of our life. Amen. We are to be different. And Amaziah wanted to honor God, but the bottom line is this, is his heart wasn't different. Our heart has to be committed to the things of God in a place of prayer. If someone never really comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ through the blood of Jesus, if it's just a head knowledge, they will never honor God totally. They're not right. Their heart has to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. God has to take that stony heart out and put a heart of flesh in it. God has to take those worldly desires away and those fleshly desires away and put in His Spirit in us. Amen. That is the transformation that happens at salvation. Come out from among them. Be separate. Be not partakers. Have no fellowship. Uh, 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 this, this present world, the darkness of this world, abstain, flee, deny worldly lust. Uh, 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 love not the world. Uh, uh, keep yourself from idols. Put off. Some would say, wow, the spiritual life is nothing but negatives and uh, prohibitions and denials and knots. No, it's really not. Amazon, you got all mixed up. The trade off for what you're going to do will honor God and bless you and your people. So, the, the, this is what, what the completeness of it is. Amen. We're to be separate from the world. But we're to be a witness to the world. And we're to not be molded uh, by this world, but we're to be manifesting Christ. Amen. Amen. Isn't that the bigger, the much more as we manifest Christ and the love of God? Amen. We're not to be ensnared and influenced. Amen. But we're to, to exert influence over the world. Amen. We're not to compromise, but we're supposed to be presenting a challenge to the world that this honors God. Amen. We're not to be coming down to the world's level, but we're pulling them up to a higher level through the power of God. God. Amen. Uh, Christ's command was come out from among them and be separate. But it was also go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. There is something much more better than the world that we can give the world. You know what takes people up out of depression? You know what can deliver you from not knowing who you are and understanding? Amen. When you live the way that God wants you to live in the family structure that God has designed for you. Amen. The God is so much more. We're not losing anything. Amen. When we follow the commands of Christ to be holy and sanctified. Amaziah, you're worried about that hundred shell, that, that hundred talent. Amen. The man of God says, I, I, I want to tell you, Amaziah, that the Lord is able to give you so much more. I wonder how we live as Christians. Stories told of a Welsh woman. The brother Doug, she fought and wanted electricity in her home. She finally got it there. And as she got it there, uh, the, the electric company was uncertain as is, is the electric hooked up. They sent meter readers out. They knocked on the woman's door and they said, ma'am, are you using your electric? Because we look at your meter and there's hardly anything used. She said, oh yes, I use it every night to light my lamps and my candles. Amen. I think sometimes that we only use God for what we have need of God for instead of taking full use of Him in everything in our life. Amen. Do you know that the Lord is able? Amen. He is able to do anything. We need to be fully persuaded that in our life, amen, He's able to take care of us because He's the God of so, so much more. I believe this tonight, that when we pray for things, I believe that God has more for us as individuals. 
And I believe this. It's not that God is running on a limited supply or that God needs to get it. God already has it. Amen. God's already won the victory at Calvary. He has life. He has victory. Amen. He has all the resources at His hand. Amen. So I think the situation is up to us to say, you know what? I'm leaving this behind, but I'm trusting the God of so much more to take care of me. So I believe Him in prayer. I believe Him by faith. It's our prayer and our faith that oftentimes we wind up lacking when He's a God of so much more. Amen. Isn't it interesting that God gives Abraham a son, Isaac, and then he asks for him back. But Abraham's willing to give up to be obedient to God. That God provides so much more. Amen. Even when we don't understand it, we have to trust him that he's a God of so much more. We know Job. He took care of Job. Daniel in the lion's den. He was obedient. And God gave him so much more. The same with his counterparts. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We're familiar with that. Think about the disciples in the boat. When the storm comes up. Master. Master. We're going to die. Master, don't you care? Do you really think that God does not care? God does care. And he knows how to speak. Peace, be still. Often we're like Amaziah. We quibble, we squabble over the little things that seem so much. When God says, wait a second, if you're obedient and you trust me, I'm the God of so much Have you ever been amazed by something in life? Amazed by, I, I, I don't know, amazed how machinery works. Um, Brother Al, he's told me about the Land Rovers and what the new land. I mean, it's amazing to think about those. Hard to almost wrap your mind around all those things those vehicles do. But I wonder, why don't we get our eyes off of physical things and be amazed this year about who God is? Why did Amaziah worry about money when he could realize the glory of who God was? With less men, he would conquer and he would take it. Oftentimes, we, we, we lack in our amazement by who God is. I mean, a God who's able to bend giants down and, uh, and, and conquer them. A, a God who's, who, who's able to take a home that's torn by strife and, 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 and disappointment and make it the sweetest place on earth. A God who's able to take souls that are wretched and bound for hell and able to save them and give them a heavenly kingdom. A God who's able to take hate and replace it with love. A God who's able to take sorrow and replace it with joy. A God who's able to take all the ashes and the rubble of our life and fill it with, with with peace and all things that are possible. He is the God of so much more. The God of so much more. Are you talking to a God tonight that's a God of little or a God of so much more? Think about this this evening. The Word of God says in Ephesians 3.20 that He is able to do abund exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask. Or think. He's able to do all. He's, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask of him. I want you to think about these situations for a few moments. What does a person who is pressed by heavy burdens think? Maybe you've been there. What does the person think or ask that is looking face to face of their loved one who's departed? Or what does a person who's facing terminal illness, what do they think or feel? 
What does a person who's facing a long haul illness ahead of them, what do they think or feel? The Bible says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. I think sometimes I look at my life and I remember when I was 17, you know, my dad died. This was the thought that ran through my mind. Will I ever be happy again? Will I ever smile or laugh again? You can, you can mock my feelings, but they were very real to me. But God showed me that he's a God of so much more. That's my story. You know your story. He's a God of so much more. So when you're there and you're asking and you're thinking and you're rationalizing, He's the God who can give you more than you can ever imagine. There was a British merchant that was asked one time by the Queen Elizabeth, will you go away and do some business for me? And he said, oh, I'm so worried about how will my business succeed if I go away for you? She said, I will take care of your business if you will do business for me. So he went away and he did the, king's business, or the, the queen's business. And when he came back, he found that he was so, so wealthy because folks couldn't understand how the queen was running his business and taking care of things. He made much more money than he would have made on his own and so much more money than he even needed because the queen took care of his business. I wonder this this evening, on the, on the break and the beginning and the commencement of 2019, I wonder what it will be like if we allow the King of Glory to take care of our business. We worry about securing things. We worry about taking care of things. I, and our way to make sure everything's in alignment. Amen. But if we would allow the King to take care of things and we would be about His business, I think that we would all be very satisfied with the rewards that come from the King of glory taking care of our own personal business. Yes. And as I listen, listen to what God can do. Don't worry about those things that you feel that are a waste. If we will fear the Lord, the Bible says, Amen. Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no want for them that fear Him. They that seek the Lord shall not want anything Honor the Lord, Solomon wrote, and prosperity will be sure. Amen. God wants to take care of us. The Old Testament says that He wants to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon us. I'd like to tell you that Amaziah, his life became something that he learned from this lesson. But Amaziah, unfortunately, fought against the Edomites. And the Lord gave him victory. But you want to hear how crazy Am uh, Amaziah was? He took the gods of the Edomites who could not defend and could not protect them in battle. And he brought them back home and he worshipped them. <laughs> That's crazy thinking, isn't it? We look on and we think, man, Amaziah, you are crazy. God has just worked a miraculous victory in your life. You've just seen the hand of God work and move. And now you choose to take the gods of the Edomites and bring them home with you and set them up and worship them and honor them. I need to tell you that Amaziah, uh, when, when he did this, uh, the, the gods that, that showed defeat, it's like modern believers taking the presence of God for granted and exchanging it for anything else. I want you to think about that on several levels. What are the things that take our time from the presence of God? Things that, that mean nothing. Things that, 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 that have not brought victory or peace or, 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 or a, a secure eternity to the world. But we bring them in and they take up our time instead of the presence of God. Maybe a challenge to us in this next year. How do we value the presence of the God 
who can give so much more. So much more. If he's able to clothe, amen, if he's able to clothe, he's able to take care of us. I want to close by this verse in Romans chapter number 5, verse number 10. The Bible says, For if we were, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. You know what the next words are? Much more. Being reconciled, we shall be saved by His I believe that everything about the Christian experience is addition. When you look at the cross itself, it almost looks like a plus sign, doesn't it? It's addition. God is not here to divide. God is not here to take away. It may appear to be that way to our physical, fleshly eyes. But when obedience to Christ is at, he's not taking away, but he's adding to it. I still, my prayer is for this church to be a place where strong families are built and raised. Because he's a God of so much more. Let's not be like Amaziah and think that things are our loss. But let's listen to the Word of God. Listen to the man of God. That God wants our obedience. And our obedience will bring so much back. I'm going to say something tonight. I can say it prophetically, not because it's, it's something that, that has been uh, spoken that I need to give a revelation, but it's the Word of God. If we will seek Him first, then all these things will be added unto us. He's the God of so much more. There was a farmer who one day owned a lot of property and someone was passing by. He walked up to that person. He said, see all this land? See all these buildings? See all this kind? As far as you can see in that direction, in that direction, in that and I own all that. The man looked at him and said, my bigger question is, how much do you own in that direction? Amen. And he said, not so much. May we own more in this direction in 2019 than what we ever had in our life. He's the God of much more. Trust Him. Trust Him. The God of much more. I'm believing that this year. I be I'm believing I'm chosen. That's a good word, isn't it? I'm chosen. And I'm believing that I'm chosen for much more. I ask you to join me. Chosen for much more. Chosen for much more. It's our decision, just the way it was in Messiah's. Does anyone have anything they'd like to say?